Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to do some fun and easy exercises in our sketchbook. So grab your materials and let's get started. For this first project, I'm grabbing my Tombow water base markers. You can use markers, pens, pencils, paints, whatever you like. And you can frame your page if you want with washi tape, but you don't have to. I started with a wavy line down the left-hand side of the page. If you're a righty, you might want to start on the other side. And we're just going to draw in some almond or leaf shapes up and down the wavy line. Now don't worry about that line, it's going to disappear at the end of this project. And you can use any colors you want and you can switch them out as often as you like. This is a great exercise to get warmed up for more complicated drawing if you choose to later. It's also super relaxing and it's so fun to see the result at the end. For the next line, you can choose any position you want and as much wave as you want. I decided to go pretty close to my first line and really it's just a guide for your vine leaves going up and down the page. There is no need to be perfect here with your vines. You can see some of my vines are closer to some than others. This is a sketchbook and it's just to have fun and relax. We're nearing the end now and you can see on the left side of the page I chose to cut off some of my vines at the top. Now I'm erasing the guidelines. Just make sure your leaves are nice and dry before you do this part. And my favorite is taking off the tape. Look at the beautiful borders. Here we are, our finished piece. You can use any art supply for this next project. A fine liner, I have two different types here, or maybe even a gel pen. And the width of the line doesn't matter. I'm using a 0.5 Copic multi-liner. And we're going to start with circles. If you don't like to freehand circles, just grab something round on your desk and trace around. They can be the same size, but I wanted to make lots of different size circles. And as you can see, they're going to be sunshines. Now what's fun about these suns is they have all different rays coming off of them. I'm not sure why, but I'm always so satisfied when I finish these suns and I see all these rays that I filled in. It does take some time for sure, but that's the best part of this, I think. And in my eyes, the wonkier, the better. Just wait till the end. 
Here's a little trick I learned just in case you're having trouble with the rays. Put a small dot in the center of your sun and some guidelines. Your rays want to point towards the center, the very center of the sun. And here I'm doing a really simple circle with really tiny little rays. For this fourth sun, I'm doing a different type of ray. Broken lines around the outside of the sun. I really love this effect once you do a few different layers. We're going traditional with this sunshine and doing simple straight lines all around the sides. You can see here I'm reminding myself, point them toward the center of the sun. This big sun right here ended up being a little wonky, which I love. Not quite perfect. I'm not quite perfect. I'm not sure I know anybody who is. And we're gonna do long skinny rays. And in between the long skinny rays, I decided to do shorter, chunkier rays. To create a sense of unity on this page, I wanted to match the rest of these suns with suns that I've already created. So this little guy has long rectangular rays, just like the big one on the left. If you feel like correcting any little mistakes on your page, you really don't have to. It's a sketchbook. Simply get a white gel pen and cover the little marks you don't want to see anymore. I also wanted to fill in the empty white spaces. And instead of doing more suns, I chose to do puffy clouds. Last and certainly not least, I'm adding faces. Nothing beats a smiley sun. I like to put the faces very low on the sunshines. I think it makes them look a little cuter. You can change up the eyes if you want. And this might be my favorite sun with its teeny tiny face in the middle. What do you think? If you want to take this a step further, you certainly could color in your suns with markers or crayons or colored pencils. But I really like the way the dark black lines look against the white piece of paper. Pen and ink art is probably my favorite. For project number three, we're going to start with a washi frame again, or you can make a frame with pencil. And inside the frame, you're going to make a bunch of squares. This is a 1960s, 1970s inspired project. And I think it ends up looking so cute in the end. I chose a set of colors 
and I chose shades of colors. You'll see in a minute. For the first square, I'm starting with a dark maroon dot in the center. And around the sides, we're going to make petals. The trick here is to have each petal reach almost out to the boundary of the box you made, but not quite to the edge. You can pick any colors you want. I chose two shades of pink. And for the next flower you'll see in a minute, I chose the color purple. Here's a dark bluish purple center and a light lavender petal. And just like the flower before, you want to square off the petal and let it almost reach the edge, but not quite. And it's fun to make these long, funky square petals right here. You also can vary the placement of the center of the flower. Sometimes I squish them up in the corner, and sometimes I put them smack dab in the center. I think this sketchbook idea would also be really cool in paint. You could probably go crazy with color if you really wanted to. Maybe make some rainbow flowers? Whatever you're in the mood for. Now you can fill up all these little squares with flowers, but I decided to write something in the middle. And this is a phrase I love. It's choose joy. This is actually the first time I've ever created flowers like this, and I just love how it turned out makes me happy. I can't wait to do some more. What are your favorite phrases? If you decide to make this one, I'd love to hear what you chose for the middle. For this next project, I was feeling festive. Can you tell what I'm gonna make? It's a mitten. I found some very pretty Scandinavian designed mittens online and I wanted to create my own. So for this one, I'm putting some green leaves on the hand of my mitten. And I also decided to get out my colored pencils because I haven't used them in a while. But I think this would also look great in watercolor. Drawing cozy clothes always makes me feel good in the winter. And there's so many different designs you can do. And there's so many different articles of clothing you can do. Scarves, hats. Maybe one day I'll even try boots.
And here I've got a light shade of red to color in the hand. Now I'm darkening in the red of the mitten and I'm moving on to the puffy cuff and I'm coloring it in blue. I wish I had fun colored mittens. Do you have any fun colored mittens? I only have gloves and they're black and kind of boring. I shaded mine a bit darker on the sides and I also shaded the sides of the red part of the mitten as well, just for a little more depth. And I didn't want to keep it plain blue, so I added another little design in a darker blue. Just some simple lines across the bottom. And for a little extra, I added some darker red dots to the hand of the mitten. If you decide to draw one of these, I'd love to see what you make. You can find me on Instagram at Christina Hunter Art. And if you don't mind, I'd love to share it to my stories if you decide to do one of these. Just let me know in the comments below. And whenever I see a drawing of fun mittens, I always see a string that attaches them together. I don't think I've ever seen this in person either, but it definitely adds something to the picture. I also decided to add a background you can stop at the mitten if you want to move on. That's absolutely fine. I chose a silver color and I made a square around it. And then I added some snowflakes, some really simple ones. They almost look like stars. I can't wait to do more of these festive holiday winter drawings. This is my favorite time of year to work in my sketchbook. This next project was probably the most fun to create. I'm starting by sketching in a very wonky, imperfect vase. You definitely don't need to sketch it, but I love sketching things, honestly. It makes me feel more confident when I start painting. 
I decided to use my Posca markers. And you can see I'm wiping off the tip because they tend to shed a little bit. And I'm using this pinky coral color for the background. I really love working with Posca markers. Back in the day, you probably don't know, but I actually used to paint on windows with Posca markers. Here are the handles of the vase. And I'll tell you right now, this vase ends up kind of ugly. And I think that's why it was my favorite. I went online and I looked at some other vases for my inspiration and I decided to just have fun and take risks. And I think that's what your sketchbook should be about. Trying things you wouldn't normally try because you can discover some really happy accidents. At the top of the vase, I chose a dark navy blue color. And again, we are not going for perfect ovals here. Sometimes I have to challenge myself to be funky. I wanted to color in the bottom at the same color. And whenever I do an art piece, I try to use the same color more than once for unity. This is a peachy color for the bottom. It makes a great contrast to the navy blue. And don't feel like you have to follow this exactly. You should be making your own funky vase. You can find lots of inspiration pictures on Pinterest or Google. I grab the teal color from the bottom and decide to decorate the middle a little differently. And yeah, I struggled being imperfect, but luckily it turned out pretty imperfect, just like I wanted. This was probably my favorite and most time consuming part was adding these little, they look like rice kernels over the peachy part of the vase. Just make sure the peach part is nice and dry. It doesn't take long. There was a lot of scrubbing of the tip of the marker on a scratch piece of paper that you won't see. See over there on the side? That's just the nature of Posca markers. Decided to go for a little intricate design here at the top. A simple flowery shape. I started with the petals on the top and sides, and then you'll see I fill in the corners as well. Thank you. 
and then I outlined it a bit just to fill in the white. And added a few little touches in the corner too. The center was feeling a little empty, so I started with this design and then changed it completely. <laughs> and then I decided to fill in the handles with some white dots. I felt like in this piece of art, Texture was my friend. The more texture, the better. This is where I decided to go a little crazy. So I took the brightest red marker I could find and I filled in the bottom with red dots. It's a simple pattern, but a time-consuming one. Dots and ovals connected diagonally. They kind of look like flowers. And at this point, I was like, what are you doing, Christina? Oop, fixing a mistake. And because I like to use colors more than once, I filled in the white space up here with that crazy wild red. Coloring the center of the vase and adding a white border to separate the pink and crazy blue bottom. And more dots. Like I said, texture is your friend. I needed to darken up that white line. And here I am thinking that I'm finished, but I'm not. I smudged a little of my marker because it was wet when I peeled off the tape. So I went ahead and fixed it. It's really easy to fix Posca marker since it's acrylic and it dries so quickly. And then I thought, what the heck? Let's throw in some more dots. You can never have too many dots. And here we are, my favorite ugly wonky base. Thanks for joining me today. I had so much fun creating in our sketchbooks together. Looking forward to the next one. See you soon.